Hello everybody. My name is Prentice Boxdale and I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are going to have a hallelujah good time for we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. You are great, you are filled so blue. In and mercy, pray all the whole day through. Is it there's a silver light that shines in the heavenly land?
Fire school land is the thing. I will lead to the land of bondage with a perfect treasure. I'll turn into a place where there is love on every hand. I'll change the land of bondage for a land of pleasure. Amen. Uh -huh. 
the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 6 through 9. That's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verses 6 through 9. But if the watchmen see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy divine word. Christians, 
We pray that we can do the Great Commission and bring more souls to you here in 2022, which we know is our theme for the church here at Eastside Church of Christ, Lord. And we know that it's the theme for you at all times, Lord. We just pray that we can be bold and courageous, Lord, in our workplace and school, Lord, and just do what you would have us to do, Lord. And Forget about ourselves, remove ourselves from the equation and do it to glorify you, to make you proud, Lord. We just ask you to uh, help us with our thoughts, Lord, anything that may be hindering us from studying or any kind of distraction, Lord. We just pray that you will prick our hearts that we can do what you would have us do. Lord, we just continue to ask you to be with the members here at the East Side Church of Christ, Lord. We pray that you will strengthen us where we're weak and pick us up where we fall short, Lord. And we pray for those around the world, all those that are members in the Church of Christ, Lord. Yes, we pray that we can all speak the same thing and make sure that your message is being displayed clearly in the way that you would want it to be and not adding or subtracting to your word. Lord, uh, just continue to watch over us, be with the speaker of the hour, Lord. We pray that. You will give him energy, Lord. We pray to give him wisdom and knowledge, Lord. And we pray that we will be receptive to your word that he's about to preach here in a moment. Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with us here for the remainder of this service. We pray that it goes pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I told 
to spend the weekend with you. You tell them, well, if you're going to stay here, you got to go to worship with me on tomorrow. Mm. And many times people feel like, you know, well, I, got, I got company. I don't care. The Lord is more important than our company. And we learn to put the Lord first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And a lot of times the reason we're behind because we don't seek God first. It's with, at our convenience, and it should be the first thing on our agenda. So this morning I want to talk to you about our your watchman, ecclesiastic writer, and uh, uh, somebody can go to the Bible, and uh, let's start with verse number one, two, and three. Somebody read that for me, Ezekiel, you know, being a, a prophet and a priest, you know. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is that I can assure you, I don't try to prophesy, but I uh, preach according to the word, and some of the things that I see that's going on, uh, all you got to do is read God's word, and you'll find out it's coming to the forefront. We find it out that uh, uh, there's a fall away that's going on in the church. You know, I, I used to think that, you know, back in the day, and this is free, 6 o'clock service, I used to love going to 6 o'clock service. And now you know, it's hard to find a 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, or even service. It wasn't a law that we had to be there. It wasn't uh, uh, you know, something that we had to do because you love the Lord, you know. And, and originally, uh, even service started for those that were working. And they needed a place to worship. But everything we cut, you know, we cut everything. Cut for this. We cut for that. But we should never cut from the Lord. We should be adding to the Lord's work. Never cut the Lord's work short. Because that's the most important thing that you'll ever do. The Bible says, but if a man gains the whole world and he loses his soul, what has he profited? You know, we should never cut from the Lord. Anything that's good for God, we ought to be in on it, right? What does the Bible say in Ezekiel 33, verse number 1? And again, the word of what? And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son uh -huh. so of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a man, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set them for, for their watchmen, uh -huh. if when he seeth the sword come up, the land, come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, Ring. and warn the people. Ring. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the score come, and take them away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Brothers and sisters, as he continues to read this lesson, and it really doesn't take long to get the point over, you know, there's a warning. You know, we get warnings all the time, you know. And the thing about it is, is that many times that we don't even want to take heed to warnings like that. But I'm telling you that Jesus is coming back. And it won't be very long. Well, the Bible says that he's coming back as a thief in the night. We, we're getting our warnings every time. When we look at the pandemic, that's a warning that Jesus is coming back. When we see tornadoes, there's a warning that Jesus is coming back. When we see people dying and going old, oh, that's, that's a warning. And we got to warn them. We hear the sound of the trumpet when this word comes. It says what? He heard the sound of the trumpet. Uh-huh. Read on. Uh-huh. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the score come, and take not warning, the blood shall be upon his own head. Read on. And the people be not warned. If the score come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away from among them. If the score come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. You know, I, I really don't get a joy out of telling people when they're wrong. I don't know about you. It, it is not something that you just say, oh, I can't wait to tell them how wrong they are. Especially when it's a loved one or somebody that you love dearly, you're very careful with them. And sometimes you hope you just don't say anything, that they'll just move on and, and do the right thing. But I, I, I have understanding in this particular instance mm -hmm. when there's a person that we do not and we, we don't warn them, uh, yes. 
so that blood can be required on our hands. We don't think about our hands being bloody, do we? Well. You know, you know, when we see people are doing wrong, we say, well, you know, maybe somebody else will tell them. But we have a duty to warn people of what? When they're doing wrong. And sometimes that's hard to do because we are what? A watchman. Mm -hmm. And you know, being a watchman for the Lord and saving Jesus Christ, we have a duty. And we have a duty to tell people about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can you imagine knowing somebody for 30 years, they never knew that you were a member of the Church of Christ? Yeah. Can you imagine having a neighbor next door that you took them bread and you gave them food and you never told them about Jesus Christ? Yeah. Can you imagine having a co-worker that didn't even know that you went to church? You know, can you imagine? The, um, the list is long. And I'm telling you, that blood can be on your hand. You can have bloody hands this morning. I can have bloody hands because we refuse to tell people that Jesus is coming back. And we refuse to teach people to know that if you're not a member of the church of Christ, you can be lost if you don't obey or repent of your sin. We won't tell people that. We get soft on that. We don't want to tell people about the doctrine of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No. You better warn people. The Bible says when Christ comes back, he's coming back for the church that he purchased with his own blood. We need to let people know that when Christ is coming back, he's not coming back for all these man-made churches. He's coming back for the one that he bled and died and suffered for. The same church that started on the day of Pentecost. Amen. So we must understand that we must warn people. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell somebody, you know, man, you know, I got three wives. Said, really? You know, it's hard to tell somebody, man, you don't need all the three wives, man. God only meant you to have one. And you got three, you know, that's like getting into somebody's business, you know. And sometimes when people are talking to us, they tell us stuff, we don't feel like we're getting into business. You being nosy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you hear things that are wrong, you don't want to be the kind of watchman to sit up there and let it just pass by and hoping that it'll be all right and come judgment day, your hands are so bloody yeah. that you can't make heaven your home. Yeah. Scriptures are written for a purpose. And do we learn that scriptures are there for our learning? And it's there for us to apply it, it's there for us to obey it, then we know that we are not spiritually minded. Yeah. Because when you're spiritually minded, everything that you read and it apply to you, we ought to try to do what? Obey it. Amen. In verse number nine, he says what? Nevertheless, that's what I read from. 33 9. Nevertheless. If thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thyself. Do you want your soul delivered this morning, yes. church? Yes. Do you want that blood to be on your hand come judgment day? You know, it takes strength, it takes faith, it takes dedication to be able to correct and to guide and to encourage people. It's easy to walk away and not say anything. Yeah. And the truth let be told that we as Christians, when we know to do good and we don't do it, the Bible calls it sin. Yes, sir. Yes. And how many times uh, uh, we have been afraid just to say anything, you know? You, well, it might be your boss or your best friend or your cousin or whatever, your brother, your your mama or daddy, but no matter what wrong is, if you know it's wrong, you ought to say, hey. the Bible doesn't say that. That's pretty, that's pretty firm, and that's pretty strict when you got to talk, correct people, you hear them say things, but you don't want that blood on your hand. The Lord expects for us to tell people about Christ. Turn your Bible to Luke 13, uh, verse number 6. Luke 13, verse number 6. Somebody said, you know, I just don't know who to save. And I just don't know what to do. Well, there are a lot of things that you can do and that people you can hook up with 
and to encourage to save souls. And you know the trouble letting me know as far as saving souls is that somebody said the Church of Christ uh, was a very, very much a growing church in the 50s. They tell me that UPS for years didn't, didn't know advertisement. It was by word of mouth. Did you know that you can spread the gospel by word of mouth? Don't you know you're advertising something every day? Everywhere you know, there's a lot of money, and this is free right here, we'll get to that. Uh, there's a lot of money spent on advertisement. You know, you know when you see the, the, the Burger King, uh, and you see the McDonald's, and you see all of those beer commercials, they're trying to touch you and me. And they pay a lot of money for those ads. But you know, every time you go to work, you're advertising something. Every time you walk out your door, everywhere you go, you're advertising something. Whether it be good or evil, but we understand that it's important for us to be a advertiser of the good things of our Lord and Savior, right. Jesus Christ. Look what happens here. Luke 13, verse number 6. Look what the Bible said. And he saved also this girl. Uh huh. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Yes, sir. And he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I came, I come seeking fruit of this fig tree. Stop right there. Now. You mean to tell me that you're a fruit tree? Mm -hmm. And I've been coming by here for how long? Three years. Three years? I don't see any fruit? Well. This is a parable. Let's just break this up. You mean to tell me you are a child of God? Well, You've been in the church for 30 years. I've been coming to the same congregation, and you have not saved anyone for 20 years? Well, and in so many words, you're trying to say, if you're going to be a fruit tree, you ought to be bearing some fruit. If you're going to be a Christian, you ought to be bearing some fruit. Amen. What he said, man, I've been coming by here three years. Can you imagine walking three years and that same tree still there and still bearing no fruit and it's called itself a fruit tree? Read on. Cut it down. Why cover it to the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. Oh, I shall be around it. And uh, he Hold on. He said, why don't you just cut that thing down? Just cut it down. It's not doing any good. Aren't you glad that the Lord, he's not cutting us down this morning? Mm -hmm. Aren't you thankful that he's spared our lives and given us a second chance to grow some fruit? Aren't you thankful that he's been long-suffering enough to let us live because we haven't been that good and we have been a We've been a, call ourselves a Christian, but we, in reality, we haven't lived a, as Christians. Yeah. And he said, hey, why don't you cut that old tree down? I'm glad this morning the Lord has still allowed me to live, to get myself together. And that's the, that's the thing that I think is most important is that if the Lord gives you time and he, and he gives you life, you ought to try to do the best that you can do to produce something while you're here. Because if you don't produce something, eventually the Lord is going to do what? He's going to cut you off. Yeah. What day is that going to be? What day is he going to cut you off? I don't know. This could be the day. Right. But you had your time. Mm -hmm. I've, had your, I've had my time. And so we must understand it's important to bear fruit. You ought to have a bucket full of fruit in your heart. A bucket full. All right. Nothing but bucket of love and bucket of suffering and bucket of peace and, and, and nothing but work in your in your vineyard. What's on your table? What's in your pocket? Do you have any work in your pocket today? Don't expect us to find any soul in 22 or save any soul in 22 if we're here and we're not bearing any fruit. Well. That's simple, isn't it? If it's not good to me, or if it's not good for me, what's the use of having a good old apple tree in your backyard, and you look out there every day, every year, and there are no apples. You gonna say, "Well, man, we cut that down." Read the words that they give them what? Let it alone this year also. Leave Florida alone, Lord. Let them alone. 
alone. Give him six more months. Give him five more years. Let him alone. I'm thinking eventually he will begin to do right. Don't you know the Lord wants us to do right? Don't you know the Lord has given a chance for us to do right? Don't you know today is your day to do right? Not tomorrow. And the reason the church is not growing is not because people won't be saved. It's because we refuse to do what we need to do. And that is warn people and teach people about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Christ is coming back soon and very soon. Read on. Till I did about it and done it. And it, is it very fruit? Well, and if not, then after that thou shalt put it down. Lord, 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 won't you help us this morning take full advantage of where we are today? That is, that we're living in our lifestyle and our way of thinking should be this morning. I am going to try to bear more fruit in 22 than I did in 21. Amen. I'm going to try to do more for the Lord than I've ever done. Why not do all you can do for God? Why not put him first? Because he is the creator of you. He is the creator of the universe. Why not give him all you can give? Why not surrender your life to him? Why not put him first? Because everything belongs to him anyway. Amen. Sometimes we think we need control. Mm. Uh, I'll do this, you know. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. You better say it will be the Lord's will. Amen. So don't get cut down before it's too late. You live it right now. You still stand. And you can make up in your mind. But you got to know what? <laughs> no one can make your mind up for you but you. Amen. I can preach it. I can encourage you, but it's up for you to make that move and make that commitment Amen. to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right. Now I can put a 347 magnum on you and make you do a whole lot of things. I can pull out my baby right here. I ain't got no baby back there. If I can pull that out and I, and I can pull it out there, see! See God! Boy, you'll seem like a party person. But I know you might be one of those ready to go. You might, you might say, I ain't, I ain't doing that. But God, he doesn't want us to be made to do anything. He wants us to be free willed because we love him to do those things. If we got to make people come to worship. we got to make people love God. That's not what it's all about. you got to learn to love the Lord within yourself. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Loving the Lord is a beautiful thing. Because he's going to be the one that's going to judge us. Yeah. Moving right along. How to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ? How to win souls? That's a great question. Yeah. The Bible only speaks of winning souls only in Proverbs 11 30, uh, throughout all the scriptures. There's other ways to win souls as well to Christ. Be a witness. Acts 1 and 8. You know, we must be a witness to our Lord and Savior and let people know what we are all about. And number two, uh, Proverbs 11 30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that wins soul is wise. We got to be a fruit of Righteousness. We can't live the life we want to live and expect people to obey uh, the gospel. We got converted the sinner. James 5 20. Somebody turn this for me. We got converted the sinner. In order to win a soul, you got to learn to convert. You know, you got to build a relationship with people when it comes down to saving souls. Now, people understand that if you don't care much about them, they don't care too much about doing what you ask them to do. But when you build a relationship with them in a the hospital, you go by and see them, you send them cards, you call them. You know, it's just like, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, something bad happens to a family member or a person, and, and you, you ain't called them for 20 years and asked them a lot of questions. That doesn't go well, does it? Right. You, 
you don't speak to me, you don't talk to me, and you don't come and ask me all my personal business. But you know you love me, you've been there for me. I'm going to be able to understand that, yeah, you're right. This is what's going on. What's the Bible such? Brother. Yes, sir. If any of you do err from the truth, as one will burn him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Man, you are you, you and I, we can uh, encourage people from the errors of their ways and convert them. We have what? We have been able to save a soul. It's our responsibility Amen. to do that. Turning people to God. You know, get them on the right track. Somebody turn to Romans 1. 16 and 17. Turning people to the Lord is so important that you can't be ashamed. You can't be shy. You can't be fearful. Because you can't do the work of the Lord. What's the Bible say? For well, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Uh -huh. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know, there are times when you go out to eat and you bow your head and you halfway by it because you're ashamed that somebody might see you blessing your food. Anybody ever done that before? Yeah. It's good to just say, uh, they may think I'm religious or something. I'm going to hold my head straight and act like I'm looking, but I'm playing. I'm praying for my food. You know, you just can't be ashamed of the gospel. You can't be ashamed to be a member of the Church of Christ. Right. You know, because that because somebody else may have uh, uh, tainted the church in terms of the influence, you can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. We scared to tell people shame, you know. You know anybody here in church of Christ? I am a member Amen. of the church of Christ. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a member. Amen. And we got people in the church, they'll be quiet in a hole, in a corner, and afraid to say that I'm a member of the church of Christ. Moving right along, as Christians, so it is your responsibility. Y'all, let me repeat that. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, so many is your responsibility. Yes, sir. Sometimes you say, well, you know, we had a better preacher, we had a better song, we had a better than hogwash. You well, say, it, it's your responsibility man. to preach and teach people and tell them about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As long as they're not preaching false doctrine, you don't worry about that. You just make sure you teach them about the truth. Right. Somebody say, anyway, it's not my responsibility, that's the preacher's responsibility. And you got a responsibility. Right. You, try, you, you try to win your immediate family mm -hmm. and uh, your relatives. Somebody say, I can't find people to say it. Yeah, you can, you're just lazy. Don't want to do it. Right. it. It's not important to you. You know, we all got family members we know that are lost that need Christ. And we said we can't find anybody. That's a hot spot right there, family member and friends that we know. But let me tell you this. You can't live the life you want to live as a Christian. And you can't go out and live the life the way you want to live it as a Christian. You must show the loving person as a Christian. You must live a clean life as a you know, somebody says, you know, I, I wouldn't come and remember that church. How many can y'all say that? There's some hypocrites over there. I got heard that before. I wouldn't come and remember that church over there. I wouldn't go, but there's some what? There's some hypocrites over there. People don't like hypocrites. Well. Somebody says, well, they do everything over there. But we must let our light shine. In order to save souls. In order to save other people, we've got to live a Christian life. We've got to show that love. In the world, they have to know us through the way we live. Amen. They know how much we love Jesus by the way we act. Because we are ambassadors for Jesus. He put us here 
to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Y'all remember Antonio Brown? Anybody ever hear? Antonio Brown, he was an ambassador. Antonio Brown is a used to be a uh, buccaneer. Y'all know what a buccaneer is? A Tampa buccaneer, all right? But he was on the team, and he got upset, and he didn't like what was going on, and, and uh, he took his jersey off and threw it in the stand. He took his shirt off and took it and threw it in the stand. And he went down on the sideline doing peace sign with his shirt off, quitting the team. Now here he is a team member, and the coach the next day said uh, he is no longer a member of this team because of the way he represented the team. We're on a team too. We represent Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Everywhere you go, you represent Jesus Christ. My, my son-in-law, Josh, bought me a real nice Vanderbilt jersey. I mean, it's real nice. And you know, I, you know, I love the Commodores, you know, and, and you know, when I put that jersey on, that means I am saying that I like Vanderbilt football. Somebody said, why are you wearing it? Because I like Vanderbilt football, okay? The stuff that I'm trying to take, whatever you put on, whatever you do, it represents what you love and what you like. Now, Fred, you know, put him on a tight uniform, you know something's wrong. <laughs> you know, people who don't represent certain uh, teams. But the point I'm trying to let you know is that you represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wherever you go. That's right. The clothes you wear, you represent. The language that you speak, you represent. The way you love one another, you represent. Yes. And when people come among us, we should find nothing but loving in order for us to let the world know how much we love the Lord, we have to love one another. Amen. You know, there's a lot, because I remember the next week. We must try to win friends and neighbors. You can't go out drinking with your neighbors. Party with your neighbors and tell them about Jesus. Yeah, girl, y'all come check. And you're doing the back end pound or whatever it is down there. The car from slot. You need to tell your friend. Your friend see you go out to the club every night and say, hey, why don't you come and go to church with me? Uh uh. You got to be an example. You got to You want to save some souls, you got to be an example. Right. Simple as that. All right? Yes, sir. In my conclusion, don't want to conclude, but you know what? I know y'all you know attention span ain't yeah, the greatest of all time. Three ways a soul can be lost. All right. In my conclusion, you can starve your soul. Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. You need the word of God. If you're not studying the Word of God, you're not applying the Word of God, spiritually you can do what? Starve yourself. Right. And you know and I know that when you starve yourself, it's hard to maneuver and it's hard to operate when you starve yourself, especially spiritually. Number two, you can strain on your soul. So what do you mean? The cares of this world the sequence of the riches and the desire of other things, enter into the choke the word and prove unfruitful. So in other words, we get so caught up into this world that we can end up losing our own soul. How can you save others if you have strangled out your own soul? And then number three, you can surrender your soul. I urge you to abstain from patches of flesh which wage war against your soul, 1 Peter 2, 11. You know, you can surrender your soul to the devil and you can never get anything done. You know that? Once you surrender your soul to the devil 
It's hard to be a Christian. Once you're giving yourself to the devil, it's hard to have a good attitude. It, once you're giving yourself to the devil, it's hard to love one another. Once you've surrendered your life to the devil, you, it's hard to function as a Christian. But if you're going to give your life away, give it to Jesus. And he can change your life around. He really can. And in my conclusion, if you're going to be a watchman, and if you're going to say so, you got to tell people when you hear about them being uh, First Baptist, and they talk to you and say, my Baptist church, and, and, and my Methodist church, and, and that's an opportunity for you to go and say, but where do you find your Baptist church in the Bible? Uh, where do you find Method in the Bible? My seventh day, my pastor, and my, and she's a woman. Uh, that's your opportunity. Oh, God, what I'm saying. I'm going to say that if you don't warn that person, that blood can be on your hands come judgment day. You want your hands to be free without warning people. And then, you know, once you tell them, there's nothing you can do. I can't make him. You know, I can't, I can't choke him and make him do anything. Well, oh, he's a fair guy. He's 62. 66, I'm going to keep you grabbing on that so quick like that. But once you tell a person you got to be mad at them, you don't have to flip out, just say, hey man, you're wrong, and you need to read the scripture, and if you want to talk more about it, we can do that. And you're fine. You, you take that blood off your hand. Right. Sometimes you got to be angry and mad and tell somebody something. Not all the time. Sometimes you're just in love. And tell them, you know what? Uh, 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 you have to let your girlfriend go, man, and you, you marry. You know what I'm saying? You got to go back and say, hey, 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 hey. You don't you know living together is a sinful act of staying for all evil appearance? Sometimes it's hard. You know people shack it up. I won't say a word. Why are you afraid of it? And you got to be mad at look. You don't need to check it. You need to get out, get you a place, or you need to get married. So if you need to tell me, it's tough warning people about right and wrong. But it's your responsibility, it's my responsibility to warn people because we know that blood can be required on your hand. You don't want no bloody hand come judgment day. You want some clean hands. This morning, if you're here, you're a member of the Church of Christ. And if you're not a member of the Church of Christ, you can become a member of the Church of Christ today. The water is ready. We need to save more souls and put more people in, uh, bring more people to Christ. So how can I become a member of the Church of Christ? Well, Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yes. And the Bible says, once you've heard, you must believe. 11 and 6. Then the Bible says you must repent and you must be baptized. You must be confessing. You must be what? You must be baptized. That's five steps. But that's not, you know, that's not it. Anybody can make it through those five steps. But as the Bible talks about it in Revelation, remain faithful. In Revelation 2.10, remain faithful what? Unto death. Perhaps you're already a member of the Church of Christ and you need strength. Man, I get fearful sometimes and I ask the Lord, Lord, take away all my fear, Heavenly Father, because I realize what Revelation 21 8 talks about the fearful and, and the unbelief in the Bible. All of us will find their way away in the lake of fire. You can't be a Christian and be fearful. You cannot be a Christian and say, I'm afraid. The Lord will protect you. He is the one that takes care of you. You cannot. Uh, you know, I, you know when, when you go to the doctor, someone, I'm going to the doctor. You know, I always pray for the doctor, but I ask the Lord first because I realize that Dr. Jesus is the one that got me. And so I'm saying this morning that if you're already a member of the Church of Christ and you need strength, 
you need some strength to go out and tell people about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It doesn't cost you much to pick up the telephone or send a text or hand out a track or tell people. But not to tell people about Jesus, that's a very bad way, a very bad thing not to do, especially as a Christian. Matthew 28, 19, the Bible says what? Go ye. In all what? Some all. You got to teach all. You got to teach everybody. You, have like, you got to act like it's the last day of your life. And if you are not trying to teach somebody about Jesus, your spiritual life is out of order. Because if your spiritual mind is the first thing you're going to do, first thing on your agenda, and the first thing you'll think about, who can I say in 2022? So why don't you come? While the blood is still running warm in your veins, while we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Tell us all, why would you see her wandering from the Lord of God? Here you are, the invitation for prepare.